five key differences of why millionaires become millionaires versus those who stay broke. We'll be taking some lessons from our recent convention last week at the MGM Grand Arena where we held our company convention where superstars and celebrities and people came out to work to be there live. We'll discuss it in this episode of the Seven Figures Quad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jeter. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here, healing to you from Dallas, Texas. And before we get into it, please, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because our next goal is to get to 150,000 subs where I want to award a church, charity, or nonprofit $5,000 on behalf of the Seven Fear Squad YouTube community, our community, but we need to get to 150,000 subs. So if you haven't done so already, please click subscribe. All right, so I shared these four key questions on stage. I did a keynote talk at our annual convention where we packed the MGM Grand Arena. Over 10,000 people were in attendance from all over literally the world. And uh, very exciting times because I believe we're the third company only in the history of the insurance industry to ever put more than 10,000 people plus in an arena ever dating back since 1967. But four questions I asked everybody on stage. Number one, are you clear about your dreams? Are you clear? Do you know the specifics? Are you clear about your dreams and what exactly it is that you want? Number two, do you understand the demand of those dreams? Number three, are you willing to meet the demand or pay the price to have those dreams come true? And number four, how good will it feel to start having those dreams now start coming true? So as I reflect upon the massive success we had last week at the MGM Grand Arena in Las Vegas, here are five key takeaways I took away which are difference makers between those that become millionaires versus those that stay broke. Number one, when in doubt, play offense. Now, our competition in the insurance industry, they're still, still doing virtual Zooms as annual conventions. It's very customary in our industry to have conferences and events to train your agents, to celebrate your agents, to recognize your, your top performers, to bring families and people together, share ideas, mentor, mentee, um, uh, masterminding, networking. It's very customary for our industry. I think many industries do that too as well, but it's very customary for us to get together every six months, at least once a year, to come together as an organization, as a company, and despite this coronavirus, despite this pandemic and these lockdowns, we're the first company ever since the reopening of our country to actually open up a company size event in Las Vegas where people were hired, staff uh, was, was hired, bartenders were hired, waiters were hired, hired everybody was hired. Hospitality crews are hired because we're bringing in over 10,000 people to the MGM Grand Arena. And so do we learn. We learned that just by observation of the UFC, listen, boxing got shut down, uh, different uh, uh, sports were shut down, but the sport that we saw stand up and out during the crisis, during the lockdowns and the pandemic was UFC. Why? UFC, what did they decide to do? In spite of everything going on, they still played offense. Even though they had nobody in the crowd and, and they're uh, at one point of the year, they're still having fights. They're still having UFC, you know, 200 and 300, whatever case, the, whatever number of the UFC fights were. They still kept putting on fights. They still had their fighters fight. They still had their fighters stay in shape. They still had their fighters uh, ignite their fan bases to support, to support them, to make sure that they uh, got ready for the next fight. They were in training camps. They employed people along the way. And then when people started matriculating back to the arenas, right, Jacksonville, Florida, but everybody was packed, right? And people were like, hey, you know, maybe this could be pulled off in spite of everybody kind of, you know, being weird, weirded out about uh, uh, super spreader events or vaccines or masks. USC said, listen, man, we're playing offense. We're still living our life. And that's what we did inside the insurance industry. We're still building our businesses. There's certain times that you can get a lot from Zoom for a moment. But like most businesses, business and passion and, and excitement and really understanding where you stand in the world and what you can accomplish in the world, you can't necessarily get that on the TV. You can't get that on Zoom. You can get that in presence of other people who are like-minded, have energy, excitement, fire, and a desire to get ahead financially. And that's exactly what we experienced in Las Vegas, that when in doubt, we decided to play offense. A lot of our competitors are still doing Zoom. A lot of our competitors are still uh, working offsite and online. We decided to get together and be a leader with inside our industry. So the question I want you to ask yourself is this. How are you playing opposite and still playing offense in your industry? Are you going opposite of your competitors, even doubtful friends and family? Are you? Answer those questions because that's a key difference 
between somebody who becomes a millionaire and somebody that stays broke. Number two, embrace the great unknown. Listen, I say the great unknown, I'm just saying take a leap of faith and know nothing and, and uh, hopefully everything will work out. Listen, what we have is the great unknown meaning that you don't know what this thing is going to do for you. You don't know what this decision for you is going to become a $100,000 income earner, a $500,000 income earner, a millionaire, a decamillionaire. You don't know how big this thing can get. As long as you have a blueprint, as long as you have guidance, mentorship, and association, listen, embrace the great unknown. I remember starting my career, I was talking on stage, I said, you know, I remember my first event, a conference just like this, I was looking up at the stage in section 208, snowsbleed section of the MGM Grand Arena. I remember I get invited to an event just like this too as well. I think I was 24, 25 years old. I was 23 when I first decided to make the decision, got out of the military, 24 years old, when I actually came to Las Vegas for the very first time. I think performing on stage during this event was Huey Lewis in the news. Okay, I'm dating myself. But anyway, I was inspired by saying to myself, wow, this is the industry I'm a part of. Wow, this is what I can do. Wow, I see some success stories on stage. Wow, I'm learning from a lot of people. There's tangible things I'm learning. There's intangible things that I'm picking up. I'm starting to seek and embrace and venture into the great unknown. And oftentimes as those pursuing something that you've never had before. You know that whole saying, if you want what you've never had, you have to be willing to do what you've never done. And so, since there's nobody in my family that has ever become a multi-multi-millionaire, nobody in my family has ever done that, I am embracing the great unknown, assuming that I have the materials, I have a strategy, I have a blueprint, I have mentors, I have people that can guide me and coach me and lead me and, and, and help me through the tough times that are willing to be in my corner. I am embracing the great unknown. Because here's what I do know. Here's what I do know. I knew that no job, no unemployment check, no career, no boss for my level of not having a college degree. And even if I did get a college degree, and the military is willingly and happily going to pay for it with my GI Bill and Illinois Veterans Grant, willing to do that for me. But still, I realize even if I get all the certifications, even if I got the college degrees, the master's degree, even a PhD if I wanted to venture and do that, I knew that based on a life I wanted to live and the dreams that I wanted to accomplish and experience, that income, no matter what type of education, academia I was able to obtain, would never reach the income level of my dreams. And when I started realizing that I need to embrace the great unknown of entrepreneurship, I realized, okay, as long as I'm following somebody that's been there, done that, I can embrace the great unknown. Because what I do know, is there's a proven path of success, that success leaves clues. And once I realized I had all those things, it, it was time for me to go all in. And for you, perhaps it's time for you to go all in, no sidestepping, no half-stepping, no marking, marking time, staying in place. It's time for you to go all in. So the question I want you to ask yourself is this, are you learning to master your craft or are you darting around doing things, bing, 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 like a pinball, doing this, doing this, doing this, doing this, and listen, I, I tell you this, well, Matt, how do I know, how do I know if this is the right thing to do? Listen, I wasn't completely embracing the life insurance industry, I was gonna say, man, I'm gonna get out of the military and be a life insurance agent. But doing the process, embracing the, the time necessary to master a craft, to feed my family and pay the bills, I realized that, wow, there's a noble reason, a noble profession that I'm actually involved in. And perhaps you're gonna be the same way too as well. Instead of going this, 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 and this, and next thing you, know, you look up and you're 30, this, 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 you look up and you're 40, this, 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 look up at 50, 60, 70, and you never accomplish anything is because you never embraced the greater no. You got too logical about, oh my gosh, failure, failure this, this and that, let me try something else. Failure this, that, oh, let me try something else. That can't happen. You have to embrace the greater unknown, assuming that you have a blueprint, you have a strategy, you have an industry that's willing to pay you very handsomely once you accomplish those dreams. And number four, you have a mentor or guidance or an association of people that have been there, done that, boom, my friends, go all in. Number three, capitalism is alive and well. Listen, I love capitalism. Here's the reason why I love capitalism. Again, as I mentioned previously, I don't have a college degree. I don't have very wealthy families. We don't, there's not one person in our, in our family uh, that made a million dollars, let alone six figures. And so when I understand what capitalism can do, and I understand a lot of people have a really twisted understanding of what capitalism is, that rich people are jerks. Listen, I was able to embrace capitalism, the great unknown, embrace the system of capitalism, and say, you know what, a guy that goes from broke to balling, nowhere to somewhere, scratch to success, can do that with this economic system in this country called capitalism in the United States of America. When push comes to shove, everyone that came to this event did not want government help or handouts. We had even people from Venezuela show up, strong, and all sorts of flags were being waved from Puerto Rico, Samoa. America provides the economic system for you to live your dreams. 
Period. People don't want to settle for a government check in this arena. They want to live a life that they've dreamt about and need a platform to accomplish that. And that is being an entrepreneur in the United States of America. So the question I want you to ask yourself is this. Are you still waiting for somebody else to change your life and so you can start living your dreams? Are you clear and connected to building and living and experiencing your dream? Number four, our celebrity guests were deeply surprised. So check this out, here's who showed up. Mike Tyson, okay? Iron Mike Tyson, arguably the greatest boxer in the history of boxing. Number two, Frederick De Silva, an illusionist, reading our minds, doing some crazy things on stage. He's got his own show in Vegas and decided to do a corporate event for us. Number three, Mario Lopez. You turn on the hotel everywhere in the world, you can't get away from Mario Lopez. And by the way, who grew up watching Saved by the Bell? It's that Mario Lopez. Number four, comedian Sebastian Maniscalco. This guy's tearing up right now. He's all over America doing shows, getting invited to daily talk shows, being interviewed in different podcasts and different media networks. This guy's tearing up. Sebastian Maniscalco, who, by the way, decided to roast me, and we'll show a clip here in a second. And number five, who showed up? Nikki Jam. Nikki Jam showed up, the godfather of reggaeton. Now check this out. These celebrity guests, Yes, they were invited. Yes, we had a speaker's budget for these guys. And uh, they did some checking on us and they did some asking around and seeing what type of company we were. And they found out we're the insurance industry. And like, yeah, we're doing a show. We're doing a, 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 a set for an insurance company. Okay, we'll rock a insurance company's conference stage, I guess. But listen, back to number one. We're just not like any other company out there in the insurance industry. We play offense. These. Celebrities felt the energy of PHV Agency. They felt us excited. They felt us pumped up. And there's a clip of Nikki Jam performing on our stage, receiving a gift from our CEO, and taking selfies and just having a blast with our guys. And we're glad to have Nikki Jam at our event. So the question I want to ask you is this. As you're building your dream, you're building your company, you're building your endeavor, what makes your company culture different? Is it a company culture that makes people want to stay with you? The right people, do they want to stay with you for the long term? What type of values and principles are you establishing within inside your organization, within inside your company, within inside your culture that attracts the right type of person you want working with you and for you? Because everybody can have access to the same industry, vendors, uh, staff, but it's the culture that's the hardest thing to create. Are you building a winning championship millionaire culture where people can start living their dreams no matter what level they're thinking? Last but not least, number five, building up the next generation. You know, so what does this have to do with being a millionaire? Oftentimes, people who are self-centered, me, 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 they just think about what they can do, what individually they can accomplish. Well, if you really want to create value, if you want to create a culture, if you want to create a, a, a system or an environment where people's dreams can come true, they get what they want because you're providing something they can accomplish too as well. You want to build up the next generation. You want to be able to create staff. You want to be able to create uh, people and personnel that are taking on some of your best habits and practices and creating a life of their own within inside the company, that they have a spot within inside your company that they feel accomplished, that it can grow, that it can be recognized, that it can be celebrated, and obviously handsomely compensated. Furthermore, our children. Our children are being raised in this environment. What type of environment are your children being raised in? What language are your children hearing from you when the times get tough? What language are your children hearing from you when push comes to shove and you may not have the financial resources? You may not have the opportunities that may come your way to create the things that you want to accomplish right now. But with that being said, what language comes out of your mouth when you don't have those doors open right now? Do you quit? Say, oh, it's not for me. Oh, this is so hard. Is that the language that your kids are hearing? And more importantly, are they seeing and witnessing? Because here you are as a parent. Hey, son. Hey, daughter. I want you to win. Yeah, but they're hearing you, but they're not seeing you. And I can tell you this, kids feel more about what mom and dad does versus what they say. Now, all of our kids had an opportunity to go up on stage and share what's on their mind, what's on their heart, what they want to accomplish in the world. And my daughter shared a spoken word poem about what it feels like, what it was like, what it is like to be raised by a millionaire father, to be raised by a father in a blended family type of situation, what it's like to be raised in an environment, still have to do school, activities, graduate, go on to the next stage of life. She wrote a poem on that that shocked everybody. They weren't expecting and tears were flowing. Why? Because she spoke her truth. 
She spoke her truth based on values and principles, and she earned a position on her platform to be able to share that truth. So my question to you is this, your children, your staff, the people that you're building a company and building a business with and raising a family with, what language are they hearing from you? Is it woe is me or thank God I got an opportunity? Is it life sucks? Oh man, praise God, another door has been opened. And more importantly, when push comes to shove, what example are they seeing from you? Is it, now listen, I'm gonna ask you to walk on water or be perfect, but is a majority of your actions and your behavior positive and constructive, or is it destructive? Because I know we're all human, we're all got emotions, but is a majority of your actions more positive and constructive, or is it destructive? Last but not least, guys, I remember our first house. I gotta share this with you because of the place we stayed at at the MGM Grand Arena. I was blown away by this. I remember our first house on the west side of Chicago. It was on uh, Mayfield and Thomas. The next thing you know, we moved up to uh, Belmont and Sheffield on the north side, and we ended up um, going to high school in the Berwyn, Cicero, Stickney area of the Chicagoland area. And uh, it's not like we had wealth. It's not like we had riches. We just basically uh, did what any uh, first generation immigrant family was to do, is just basically do enough to survive, have a decent access to this education school system because everything compared to what it was in the Philippines, it's like living like a king and queen here in America. But when I look at what our parents did and what they did to, to, to put food on the table and basically for us to have to survive and thrive in our own way, I'm remembering our first house. It was very, I look back at it today, I say, I can't believe a, a guy like me who's six foot three and 225 pounds can fit in a house like this. I can't believe I went to the bathroom here, took a shower here, went in the basement here, it kept flooding all the time, and I can't believe that this was our first house. To the point where our dream home that we left in Chicago, our master bedroom had more access to plumbing and showers and bathrooms and toilets than our first house in, in its entirety ever did. And when we're staying at the MGM Grand Skylofts, it was a two bedroom, basically a kind of 3,000 square feet. We have a living room, we had a view overlooking the uh, uh, the Las Vegas Strip. We had uh, a, din uh, a dining table. We had people over for breakfast every morning. We just have conversation, communication, community within inside our, our inside our condo, inside our, our skyloft. I'm just reflecting on how it was for my sister and I to grow up in a house with our parents, first generation immigrants from the Philippines, was able to establish for us, and an overwhelming sense of gratitude and appreciation for all the hard work and the feeling it had for us to say, you know what. Wow, this is what it feels like to start living your dream? To stay in a place like this, upstairs, two bedrooms. I'm looking at my kids uh, rolling around on the bed, you know, eating, uh, I don't know, cookies and Fig Newtons on, on, on bed, just watching the TV. I'm like, wow, what a bubble you are living in because this is not how your mom and dad and this is not how your aunties and everybody in your family was raised in and how amazing it is that we embrace the five things I just discussed on here. And in terms of defense, we played offense. And in times of, of, of desperation, we choose to buy into our dreams more than our fears and doubts and setbacks. We knew that there's a better way. And we are starting to live the life that we only dreamed of. Sitting in, in this place, and my wife and I are looking at the spot, and my wife was getting her makeup done every morning by makeup artists and, and hairstylists every morning in, to get ready for the day at this convention. It just blew my mind away how much our life has drastically changed just because we started thinking differently we decided to get what we were uh, centered on. We got very clear about our dreams. We got very clear about what our strategy and execution plan was. We held ourselves accountable to a system and a process in an area where performance is measured. And next thing you know, boom, boom, boom. These things start opening up. We didn't ping around and we didn't bounce around. Did we have uh, things not going away? Of course. Did we have uh, losses in, in, in business? Of course. We had setbacks in business? Of course. Things weren't always a rose garden. Things weren't, weren't always living our dreams. But if you look at all the times we failed, compared to the times that one or few times that we won, the seven, eight, nine times we had setbacks versus the one or two times we had everything go right, I'll tell you this, it's so worth it. That moment is so worth it to be able to see your children up on stage, to see your family there, to see your team rocking on stage, to see their lives starting to change too as well. I can't tell you how good it feels not only for you to start living your dreams because you overcome your fears, your failures, your setbacks, and you decide to take courage and overcome those things, you start seeing other people living their dreams in their life and their financial success too as well. I can't tell you how awesome that feels. My last question to you, as hard as I know you're working, do you have something to show for? Or do you just have something to owe for? Are you enjoying the fruits of your labor? Or are you just dealing with the thorns of your labor? There's no payoff. And how good 
will it feel for you to actually start living your dreams? The things that you only hoped for years ago, you're actually starting to materialize them and making sure that you have a plan or strategy to make sure that those dreams come true actually start becoming a reality. Friends, that's the benefit of entrepreneurship. That's the benefit of this journey of deciding to become a first generation cash flow faith-based millionaire. That's the benefit of capitalism, the right type of capitalism. That's the benefit of being in a country that's free, that you can be brave, that you be courageous versus everybody else who wants to play it safe. See, guys like us, guys and gals like us, don't play it safe. And for those of you watching this, I know deep down inside your heart and spirit right now as you're watching this video, I know you don't want to play it safe either because safety is what's got you where you've gotten. But the great unknown, my friends, I tell you this, you embrace the great unknown. You have a strategy, you have a plan, you have a blueprint, you follow the steps of success that somebody else has laid out beforehand. Before you, you find a way for you to be different, have your own brand, your own, your own message. I tell you this, the journey is well worth it. And it's a big difference why people stay broke versus like yourself, who will become eventually a first generation cash flow, faith-based millionaire. That being said, guys, I would love to know your thoughts, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me. I wanna know what you are doing to make sure that uh, your dreams are also becoming true too as well. What are your questions, what are your answers to the question I had about the four questions here as I open up this video? What are your responses? I'd love to know it in the comment section below. So before I let you go, please check out this video here, which is one aspect that every millionaire master. And the second video here is the movement that is disrupting a $63 trillion industry. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.